Over the course of 22 years, it has often been an unenviable task going into battle for the reputation of John George Terry, as his triumphs have accumulated on pitch, so has his charge sheet off it, the racist the philanderer the England rebellion leader and the dodgy dealer, he has been a pantomime villain in the eyes of many for a long while. But there is also much misinformation, fake news, as it has come to be known. Terry was, of course, cleared in court of that alleged racial slur against Anton Ferdinand, I still regularly encounter people who are adamant he was convicted at Westminster Magistrates Court in summer 2012 and, even when I explain that I covered every day of the trial and can show them the judge's written findings, they insist I must be wrong. Just as there were those present in that courtroom, on professional reporting grounds, who insisted publicly that Terry could not be innocent, as he had been found only not guilty. Note for those those untutored in English criminal law nobody is found innocent, the only outcomes are guilty, or not. Even this week a piece on Terry's Chelsea departure, by no less an outlet than the BBC, insisted he missed the 2012 Champions League final through a ban in response to that incident at QPR. It was hastily corrected, that of course conflates two disciplinary sentences that imposed by the Kangaroo Court of the FA for the Ferdinand matter and another reputation and ending incident, his needless and petulant actions in the semi-final against Barcelona. The Stranglers had it about right in No More Heroes those held aloft to soak up our adulation only ever present one inevitability, that they will let us down. Terry was not blameless in that incident involving Ferdinand but he was not guilty of a criminal offence. Had he been so, I would have had no qualms about calling for his Chelsea career to end there and then, and I am certain I would not have been the only one. But there remain those in the court of popular opinion who believe they are more learned about a case they have never heard, than the judge selected to hand down his verdict on it, just as the matters surrounding his removal as England captain, for sleeping with a teammate's wife so the popular claim goes, had far more to them than the baying social media hordes, or for that matter the FA, would accept, in case we really do care what footballers do between the sheets, and I for one don't, the claim involved the ex-partner, of an ex-teammate, and that is quite some difference, there are plenty of more Lauded stars, welcomed blame-free to our halls of fame a BBC Sports Personality of the Year, no less, who are known to have strayed far closer to home than that. Terry, the player, is the product of an environment that saw his potential early, and hothoused him, through the influence of players and coaches of great experience and learning. Terry, the man, is the product of something else and his own family background has been the subject of almost as many column inches as the man himself. That is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. There are plenty from such backgrounds who do not find themselves in such scrapes, but it does add context, as does the combative nature of English football's tribal support, and even its media culture which piles on a degree of scrutiny largely missing from the careers of Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi, the build em up knock em down routine. Has seldom done more building and knocking than in the case of Terry. It is true those who work with him talk of his ego it's all about John is a frequent aside, but they also talk about the single-mindedness that turned a boy from barking into the greatest defender the Premier League has ever seen, and who helped transform a club just as much as Roman Abramovic's rubles, or Jose Mourinho's tactics. Is it possible to have one without the other now there's a debate? Terry is no saint. But neither was Bobby Moore, or Brian Robson, or Paul Gascoigne. I could easily go on, yes, he has done things that in the cold light of day he probably regrets and who of us, with a clear conscience, can say that I isn't true about ourselves. Chelsea fans have taken the man to their hearts because he is easily identifiable as one of us human, flawed, a mere mortal. Whatever it was he did say to Ferdinand that day at QPR, he should nt have said it, but, as the judge said, there is no evidence, nor ever suggestion that Terry is racist, and, as Terry's friend and teammate Ashley Cole said in court, somewhat less articulately, but in the view of many far more pertinently about the case, we should nt even be here. Terry's misdemeanors are many, but his crimes are few, the main one, seemingly, is that he is human. And one day that trait might become one that is valued once more, rather than reviled, as it now seems to be. Share this to 6226 Chelsea, John Terry, Premier League.